is Thomas Keegan with LibertarianProgressive.com. We're an independent media organization, and we interview independents and third-party candidates who are going to be on the ballot, specifically candidates who are the only independent and third-party um, option on the ballot this year for Congress, Governor, Senate, uh, and mostly the U.S. House. And today we have an interview with Jeff Dalkey, an independent U.S. House candidate, district number six for the great state of Wisconsin. And uh, you can find out more at libertarianprogressive.com, also blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel. Now, um, Jeff is going to be calling in soon, and so you can read more about it at jeffdalkeyforcongress.com, J E F F D A H L K E F O R congress.com. So far, we've interviewed about 22 um, people running for Congress so far this year. We have about 40 plus a couple days, more than that, days left until the election. So, um, so you have a lot of choices to make, and most people are just going to see Republicans and Democrats on the ballots. However, we're here to show you that uh, you have some other options. We started in 2012 when I was thinking, you know, what are my options this year besides Republican and Democrat? And I decided to look in my local area, and I found an independent who is running for U.S. Senator in Florida. And how come I haven't seen this guy on TV? I haven't seen him in the debates. So I decided to exercise my right of a press. And I said, I'm going to call this person up and interview them and put them on my YouTube page, create a website, and then... Um, That's what I did, and then I ended up interviewing over 50 people all across the country, independents, libertarians, Green Party candidates, and um, anyone who wasn't a Republican, Democrat, and I try to pick districts that uh, they were the only third-party candidates. Um, In 2014, I didn't really do as much as working a lot, and so I made a compilation of other people's interviews. But in 2016, again here, we are doing that again, and we want um, people to see the options. Uh, you can see all the interviews on our website, libertarianprogressive.com. They're embedded with our YouTube channel, and we want you to share these interviews. Uh, like, subscribe, rate, and you can kind of present them all as one package, kind of like um, here's 50-plus examples of all across the spectrum. Uh, we want to build consensus, and... Um, and so that's that's how we do it. And so, uh, you, you know, whether you're on the left, the right, uh, there are some consensus building issues. And um, actually, we have Jeff calling in right now. And so let's bring him right in. All right, Jeff. Uh, good good day and happy uh, 25th of September. How's it going today? Great. How are you today? I'm doing great, and it's good to be able to interview you and independent candidates running for uh, Wisconsin's sixth district. And, um, and sir, uh, we have some questions to ask for you today, but um, let me ask you just a few questions first. Is this your first time running uh, for an elected office, especially Congress? And if I may ask you right off the gates here, why are you running as an independent instead of a Republican or a Democrat? Yes, it is my first time ever running for any political office at all. Um, I'm running independent because everything is so polarized. I want to be the one person that can be the rock, the solid person in the middle to get both parties to come together. And finally, after 10 years of getting nothing done, maybe we can get something done. And maybe build some consensus on issues. And uh, the American people are behind you, and and we'll see how that goes on Election Day. So it's getting closer to November 8th. Have you been in any debates yet? Are there debates coming up? Any other events coming up for you? Um, I was in one forum, and that was a while back. Probably it was before the primaries here in Wisconsin. Uh, I have two more scheduled. One is uh, late October, and one is very early November, I believe. All right, great, great. And uh, so two more events scheduled where you're going to be in a debate with the other uh, candidates, the main party candidates? Uh, against the Democrat, for sure. 
Um, we can't seem to get the incumbent to show up on anything. He doesn't want to even partic- participate. He's kind of leaving oh, himself completely out of the yeah. gate. He doesn't want to engage with anybody. Uh, that that kind of arrogance usually would uh, backfire on someone in, in most places, but we'll see how that goes. Um, so, again, we're talking with Jeff Dalkey, independent U.S. House. Um, you can visit JeffDalkeyForCongress.com, Jeff, J-E-F-F, D-A-H-L-K-E-F-O-R, Congress.com. And on your website, it shows here that, uh, you know, you're a family man, you uh, are an entrepreneur, and um, – you care about your country, and actually, you have a list of issues here. We actually checked out. Um, you had a Reddit. Um, if people are not familiar, Reddit.com, where uh, you, know, you can have a Q and A type of forum, forum on there. Actually, I, I find that um, very, very interesting. And you had a lot of back and forth uh, in kind of an open forum debate, where or question and answer type forum, where people can ask you questions. Uh, uninhibited, and uh, you know you'd have to answer them. So it's a very transparent type of forum, and we'll go through some of those issues. But let me ask you, what what is your uh, top platform, your top issues that you're running on? You know that you feel passionate about. I'm sure there's a ton of issues, but what are the few core ones that you're running on this year? Um, term limits, campaign finance, and uh, campaign finance reform. We uh, definitely have to do something there. The corruption has gotten so out of hand in politics, we have to figure out a way to curb that. It's destroying our country is what's going on. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that, kind of like college education football. Is also, you know? yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, you have like a, a team that has gathered so much momentum and power they always get the top fit picks they're always going to be number one uh they're just going to crush anyone else that you know and they're always in the championships year after year after year because it's just um a self-perpetuating cycle almost um right and and, and here's in the reddit thing you said uh 37 percent of House of Representatives are attorneys. They make up less than one half of 1% of the U.S. population. That's not representative. We need more people with specific expertise from industry, farming, and manufacturing who understand the issues. Maybe more entrepreneurs like yourself. Uh, if you could talk about small and mid-sized businesses and, um, and what's missing in the equation that we have now, and uh, why someone with your experience might be the best person to understand what a small business person or a mid-sized business person, y- you know, struggles with. Um, what, from talking to all the people out on the campaign trail, the ones that are the small business owners, it's regulations and red tape if they want to start a new business or expand. I mean, the government is making it nearly impossible for them to do anything. They have their hands tied or putting a roadblock up for them at every turn. Um, taxes, they said, are just incredibly bad, especially here in Wisconsin. They're, they're state taxes. We need to do something to help out the small businesses. You go down a lot of the small communities, and their downtown department stores, they're empty. You know, I remember when I was growing up, you would have people walking all over the streets, and it brought in a, a sense of community, and that is, seems to have gone away. And I think that's why we need to get the small business back in and really embrace what they're going to do and what they're going to try to do, you know. And I think the government, local and state and federal, needs to do whatever they can to help them and ensure that they're going to be successful. Um, I've noticed there's one smaller community here in Wisconsin. They actually have, for the first year, a small business has free rent. Well, most of your small businesses fail in the first year because they don't anticipate one thing or another, and it gives them the opportunity to understand and see, you know, what kind of things they need to change on their business role model, and it, it helps them. And I think we need to do more of that throughout the whole country. Just filling up the small yeah, communities will help. 
And tragically, if you if anyone wants to look up the statistics of new startups over the last couple of decades, I mean, it is um, a downward uh, trajectory. Um, unfortunately, hopefully, you can turn that around. And this might seem like a silly question, but do you think maybe having more people with um, entrepreneurial experience in Congress might actually help small businesses in the real world? I believe so. I don't, I mean, I don't see how it can, it can hurt. You know, I mean, if you're trying to do something, well, pass on the knowledge and the information and the shortcuts, what, what have you to uh, other people trying. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these people say, you know, the government creates all the jobs and, but they've never been in that experience of having a business and, and actual, you know, they could try to imagine what it's like. And I'm not saying you always have to be in someone's exact shoes to have empathy, but, um, but there isn't anything like real world experience. Uh, actually, if you could right. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, like, um, you know, how long have you been in your district and, uh, you know, just a little bit about yourself, Jeff, if that's right. Well, I was born and raised in a small community. It's three miles outside of my district where I live now. Uh, me and my wife had moved into district six. We live actually in Mequon. We moved there three years ago. Um, I've actually been a resident of the state most of my life. There was a short time when I bounced around throughout the Midwest honing my construction skills so that I could get to the point that I'm at now. But for the most part, I've been here my whole life. I was born and raised on a dairy farm. I worked for 16 years for a union construction company right out of uh, high school. Uh, I made the most, most of all my opportunities that they gave me there, and I moved up into management roles. And that's what got me to the position that I'm in now. I'm a global service technician for a California-based company, and it's a job that lets me travel all over the world. Um, not just like some of the other people say, yeah, I've traveled the world. I don't just travel the world. I actually work throughout the world. You know, I've been to Russia, China, Indonesia, Australia. So I'm actually working with their governments. And I think that's going to give me kind of a unique perspective on things when I do get to Congress. On, on that aspect of it. I think I'm a little bit more well-rounded, you know, growing up on the farm, actually working my whole life, and doing the global travel. Yeah, so you can't really put you in a box, um, and maybe that's one reason you're running as an independent. I mean, you've been in a union, but you're also a business owner. So, I mean, some people might box one of those as a Democrat and another as a Republican, when in actuality, you know, you could be an, a, an independent and experience both and uh you know be able to represent both when you get to congress and um so uh that's good that's good that's well-rounded and uh very i gotta clarify like, something um, though i'm not i'm not a business sure. owner i've you know i've okay. worked for um a couple of uh, larger businesses my my entire life so i'm not a business owner i'm just a, a regular worker all right and uh and um and you haven't been in Washington your whole life and, and, and counting that no. as your whole work resume. Um, that's right. A lot of the representatives, it seems like that's all the only job they've ever done is, uh, you know, start as a state legislator, then go to Congress and governor and use it as a stepping stone for this and that. And um, now let's actually, you know, I'm going to use this Reddit form as a lot of the things that you said is I think you did such a great job there. Um, and uh Okay, so let's the next issue that you addressed, and these were just random questions that people asked, was um, you put here that marijuana needs to be rescheduled at a minimum, if not completely decriminalized. Ask three people, and one of them will be able to get a hold of it in three calls, um, and et cetera. So, uh, you know, that's um, an issue now. You see states like Colorado, Washington decriminalizing it, uh, legalizing it, and, um, and there's a lot of research going on for its medical uses. Uh, you hear about different versions of it, um, some without the THC that has more of the other chemicals. I don't know so much into it, but uh, so some people are moving to Colorado and especially people that have kids that might have multiple sclerosis and things like that. So they have this available natural alternative as a medicine. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Because it's kind of turning into a hot topic nowadays. I think with the millions and millions of dollars in tax benefits that we can create out of this, I think it's just a no-brainer to just, just legalize it. Um, some people have come up and said, well, it's a gateway drug. 
if there, you do a little bit more research, alcohol is actually a bigger gateway drug to bigger and harder narcotics. Um, if there's any value, and even if it can save, you know, a handful of lives by using it medically, by all means, I think we need to do it. And at, at mm-hmm. least we have to reschedule it. There's no reason it should be considered something, you know, Schedule 1. It's yeah, a natural yeah, I think for both, God's sake. Right, right. And, it, yeah, at the point it's at right now, it's not even able to be studied. Um, it's not even able to be researched. Um, so the next issue you mentioned here was a pro-Second Amendment. Um, so people have a right to defend yourself. Is that how you feel about that? Absolutely. I mean, uh, we don't need any more new laws. We just need to fill in the cracks and the gaps of the agencies so that they overlap properly. I mean, stuff just falls through the cracks. We need to fix what we have. More legislation isn't going to happen. If you take all the people's guns away, you're still going to have bad people with guns. An evil person is going to do evil things no matter what you do. They're still going to get their guns. I don't believe any more legislation or any changes in it. Nothing is going to help. We just need to leave it as it is. Just fix the loopholes and don't let anybody fall through the cracks. Yeah, and um, not to say that, you know, people should. I, I, you know, what I'll have to say. I agree with you. Is I have to say that because I do own a gun and um, and am very responsible with it. But uh, you know, um, I do think that people should still try to strive to reduce violence in a society. I don't think getting guns is the root of the issue. I mean, probably just more education, maybe getting rid of the war on drugs, uh, you know, but there are some things that we could, and, and improving the economy and stuff like that. I mean, that's in a holistic way, you know, there are steps to um, get rid of uh, or reduce violence. Um, Do you think there's ways to, without messing with the second amendment, you know, reducing violence in society? That, I think, goes back to the whole sense of community. Um, Over the past 20 years, it seems like that has been leaving. You know, you can't really... People used to... It used to take a village to raise a family, and now it's everybody's individual. Nobody's all, you know... People just don't seem to bond together like they used to. And I think if we can do that and start educating the people and, you know, I think that's going to help. Yeah. And maybe selecting, um, you know, something that's when you have a two party system, it seems very divisive, too. It's amazing for probably at least the last hundred years, probably since Abraham Lincoln. I mean, there's only been two major parties and probably ninety nine point nine percent of our entire government is Republicans and Democrats. I mean, we favor competition and most everything else in life. And actually, someone wrote here on here, um, one of your opponents here, Grothman's campaign has raised over, and I guess this was about 14 days ago, might be higher now, $579,000 to your $1,025. Um, and then you wrote, uh, both numbers are higher than that. And, and you're right, he's funded by the Koch brothers. So that goes into your campaign financing. I think we touched on that a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you want to touch on why you're the best option this year for your district. Well, I think the whole unique um, idea that I've traveled the world and i am worked, you know, I, I've lived on a dairy farm. I was growing on, up on a dairy farm. I'm more well-rounded compared to the rest of the people out there. Um, I've experienced what most others haven't and i believe that i am just like everybody else walking down the street so that alone should put me in a place where people can relate to me and they can talk to me and i feel that anybody can walk up to me and ask me a question and i won't ever let that change that's it's not in my nature great and to make it uh, maybe easier for people like yourself in the future um what do you propose uh could be some reforms to the election system or campaign system well i think i go back and forth on this but i kind of think that we need to have a um state funded campaign finance everybody gets the same amount uh each congressional candidate will get the same amount 
and I'm doing mine pretty lean, so I think that mine should probably be the whole baseline for the entire country because I believe that we're going to be able to do this for, well, under $70,000. There's no reason you should be spending one, $1.5 million like some of these guys are. If you get out there and are willing to do the work, talk to the people. Do what you're supposed to do. Understand your constituents, you know. Bond with them, you know. Show some compassion, you know. Just uh, be one of the community, not just one of the people that are the problem in government. Yeah, and like you, I think one of your slogans is um, we need more boots, and, um, you know, and these boots are made for walking. And, and in fact, that kind of reminds me of uh, one of the senators that ran in Florida a long time ago. He walked so much across the country that he wore his soles out on the bottom of his shoes. Um, so, But you don't see much of that anymore, and I think that was Bob Graham. Um, but uh, so... Um, and, and and you did address here, uh, this is sometimes an issue that people want to hear about. Um, you know, you believe that a woman has a right to decide what to do with her own body, and that's her choice. Is that right? Absolutely. I mean, people will ask me, and I'll tell them, you know, I'm not going to pander to you. I will give you my honest answer, and I will look them straight in the eye and say, can I have a baby? And they'll look, well, no, you can't have a baby. And that's when I will tell them, therefore... I have no right saying what a woman should do to their body. It is completely 100%, I believe, a woman's right. Me being a man, I I, I have no say in that. If men could have babies, I think we would be looking at it a whole different way. Um, You know, and I'm not trying to discount, you know, the serious situation, but I just think that would be a fact. Um, And, uh all right, all right. And a lot of people, you know, can say, you know, they might be against it, but the government shouldn't really have much to do with it um, is a, a good principle, I think, as well. Well, let's go into um, – now, we're not going to get into presidential politics. The whole purpose of this is to build consensus on what people can unite on. And I believe that, uh, you know, the Congress and congressional races is something that's a lot less divisive than presidential politics. And um, – you know, there's 435 members in the House and, or in the Congress, and, um, you know, there's room there for instead of you're just not just voting on one person, you're, you know, we have room there for a lot of different representatives and uh, a lot of different voices, and that's what we should have. And um, now let's talk about the justice system a little bit. We touched on this on this Reddit post uh, in general debtors' prisons, private prisons, the whole justice system in a broad brush. Um, what, do you, what do you say about that in the current uh, state that it, it's in right now? What are your thoughts? Uh, the criminal, you mean as, in, as far as reform or yeah, how things are happening reform. now? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, we need to do something. Uh, things seem to have gotten out of, out of hand, and we need to, you know, I think we're probably going to need another agency. I am all for shrinking government, but there's going to be certain things that we're going to need to add to. And I believe that this is one of them. We need to have a couple different individual agencies, independent, actually, and uh, they need to be the ones to uh, investigate in-house. You know, if doing the way we do it now, when you're policing yourself, that's, that's the wrong way to do it because you can make your records read anything that you want. Where I believe if we have two individual outside entities that are going to investigate problems that are in uh, a police department, I think that's going to be a much uh, more effective way to get to the bottom of things. Yeah, that's not picking on any department. I mean, that's pretty standard. I mean, if you know, if there's ever an investigation, usually it's usually done by an outside party, not you know, someone investigating themselves, uh, usually. Uh, right. So, yeah, that's a, definitely a good idea there. And um, and that should go across the board for every single kind of department out there. And um, and you said something also about grand juries. Could you explain that a little bit? Um, about the grand juries. Um, yeah, that there – uh, let me see. Um, that there should be um, – the grand jury system needs to be adversarial so that there's another side arguing the case. Um, and uh, maybe um, – let me see here. 
Well, here's the question someone asked. Well, it's pretty clear that government and law enforcement are involved in citizens' business, cellular data. Do you plan? Do you have a plan to reverse that? Someone named um, Bill Nye, the math guy, asked this. And what can be done when states outlaw ticket quotas, but the police continue to use them? The current lawsuit in New York by several officers against the NYPD brings up the issue of who holds government accountable when it willfully breaks the law it's meant to uh, enforce. How could these departments be made to actually obey a ban on the predatory policing for profit model? And I think here's what you wrote back. Um, For starters, the grand jury system needs to be more adversarial so that there is another side arguing the case. But as you know, this is a very complicated issue and you would want to talk to some of the experts already researching and writing policy on this perspective. The short answer on policing for profit is that we need better unbiased oversight. And I think that's actually what you were just kind of saying um, earlier in a nutshell there. Right. Yeah, I mean, we – exactly. We need to find a better way to do things because the way we're doing things now, it's it's not working. Uh, You'll have – politicians, you'll have uh, people in police departments, just everybody trying to mind their own pockets. I mean, it's, it, it's everywhere. We need to get to the bottom of that and find ways to stop. It seems like it's like there, you know, that most places say there's not a quota system, but sometimes it seems like there, you know, I wonder if there is a quota system and it seems like prosecutors, you know, they want to prosecute. I mean, they should want to prosecute, but it seems like, you know, they want to do it for political reasons so they can say, you know, I have these, this many notches instead of always. Now, I'm not saying there isn't honest ones that uh, go the extra mile to find the truth and, and things like that. But, you know, um, definitely want that on, on the radar. And uh, so right. now you did write here. um You've been a union member for most of your career, so do you support the right of um, workers to unionize? Yes, I absolutely do. Um, My father retired from a union. I've been in a union since I was 19 years old. My son's in a union. Um, I believe that it's a good thing. I mean, when unions started out, they were a very, very good thing. I understand also, you know, being close to them, they have their problems in their own house, you know, with anything else, the more power you get, the more opportunity for greed and corruption. They need to fix their own houses. But the principle of the whole union, I think, is a very, very good idea. You have a collective group of people after the same desired thing, and it's what's best for the workers. Yeah, yeah, and it's amazing. I mean, it can bring some interesting results. I saw an article in Denmark the other day. Believe it or not, they don't even have minimum wage laws. Like so, at the same time, their unions provide you know even like McDonald's workers like a pretty good living wage, you know, and um, and the hamburgers don't cost that much more. So, right. um, so it's very very interesting. People can read up on that or, or Google that. Um, and uh, what about uh, the tax system? I mean, this is one of your big issues. Uh, what you know, is it too complicated? Is the IRS tax code? Have you ever read the IRS tax code? I, I, that's not something you can read. I, I, I would be afraid think. to because I think it would be mind-boggling trying to understand that. I, I, we just need something simple. A simple graduated flat tax is what we need. You know, say you start out whatever and you go to $10,000, you pay X percent. And as you go up, you pay a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. It would be fair. You can get rid of the IRS for the most part. I mean, it's going to eliminate the loopholes because you won't have tax returns. And it's going to all around be a better system. And um, what about the budget itself? Uh, I mean, you know, 19, almost $20 trillion in debt. Is that – how serious is that? And are people um, – you know, it seems like no one really even – you know, I think I've heard people in the past be concerned about it, but I, I don't see people having too much urgency about that. Is is it urgent, or have, have we crossed the event horizon on that? Or, or? Well, we can't afford to go any more in debt. I mean, when when do you stop? Sooner or later, somebody's going to say, you know what, no more credit. We're not giving you nothing, and that will 
be the beginning of very, very, very hard times in the United States. We will be ending up like Greece if we don't do it pretty soon. We need to work on it. We need to figure out a way to repay it. And it's going to cost Americans money. There's no two ways around it. If we owe the money, we got to pay the money back. But in doing that, we may be able to keep our tax rates the same if we can shrink substantially the size of government. Government has grown so large, it's just a beast within itself. We need to do something. We need to shrink it and shrink it substantially. Yeah, and while the uh, the interest rates are still very low, that's the ideal time to shrink it, you know. Um, yes. So we need to do that in the window opportunity that we have. Um, what about some um, – Okay, so you wrote here you think the whole FDA needs to be overhauled and we need more independent researchers for unbiased research. Um, what, what do you say about the FDA, the current FDA? I mean, it seems to me, like everything else in government, whoever pays you the most money, you're going to get what you want. We need to overhaul it, start over, and figure out a simple way to, uh, to police it. I mean, you can do any, just about anything you want now. They can make the records read what they want, and the FDA just signs off on it. Now, going back to cannabis, for example, I mean, it's the one thing that there's tests and studies out there that said it works, and they will not let anybody. So right there is part of the problem. We need to and definitely, about, definitely look into it. What about people that want to try experimental drugs? What about you know, if someone's a lobbyist um, and going back into the private sector or, or they're in Congress, I mean, you know, reforms like that. And also on, on your website, you mentioned Social Security. If you could talk about Social Security and, um, and maybe, uh, you know, that as well. Uh, Social Security, that's going to be when we figure out a way to balance the budget and start repaying, that is the very first thing that needs to get paid back. I believe it was $2.3 trillion that the federal government supposedly borrowed out of there. Well, if you borrow it, put it back. Uh, if we can do that, it's going to make Social Security solvent. I don't believe that we should be cutting people's Social Security benefits, you know. And then it's appalling when people tell me that it's an entitlement. It's not an entitlement. People paid into that their entire life. It is their money. We just need to get it back so we can make that whole program solvent again, and it's going to help out the elderly, Every, everybody, actually. Yeah, when most people get their payroll check, or even if you're self-employed and, and you have to pay self-employment taxes, I mean, you have three different main sections. You have your federal income, you have your Social Security, and your Medicare, and that's why they're separated like that, and the Social Security is supposed to go into its own fund. But, you know, honestly, what's happened is people have been chipping away at that fund and using it for other stuff. And That's um, right. They use it as their own piggy bank. Yeah. And if they haven't, it, it would be a lot more solvent. Um, well, let me ask you this, Jeff. Um, wh who are some of your favorite past or present people, uh, elected or not? We'd be interested to hear your answer on that. Some of the past and present. Uh, people that I, I admire now would be, <laughs> good question. <laughs> you got me stumped here. Uh, people in the past, I mean, I admire what Ronald Reagan did to an extent. Uh, Reaganomics, we understand, didn't work, but as far as on a, a national level and a, a global level, he was a great leader, you know. Uh, Lincoln, absolutely Lincoln. He uh, slavery. I mean, look look at the things that he's he's accomplished. He, he again, an independent. Truly, Lincoln was an independent. So, I mean, Lincoln, Reagan, and people nowadays. Well, I'm not too sure who about now. I admire my wife for putting up with me during this campaign. <laughs> That's an excellent answer there, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, we'll just leave, leave it at that. And uh, now <laughs> we've been talking, of course, with Jeff Dahlke. Um, you can find out more information at Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, Dahlke, D-A-H-L-K-E-4, F-O-R, Congress.com. 
we do appreciate your time today, and um, we'll be posting this up again at libertarianprogressive.com so if people want to rewatch it and um, or re-listen to it. Uh, any final words of wisdom here? Any uh, other things you'd like to share before we end the interview here, Jeff? Well, I just want to say, you know, I think that this is the year of the independent. Uh, from the people that I've talked to, one-third of the people don't care about anything other than the fact that I'm an independent. And that in itself is a sad fact that people are so frustrated that just because you're not a party-affiliated person, they're willing to vote for you. That's not how the country was founded and how it was supposed to be, but that's how it has become. And I just want to be the person to get it back on track and hopefully get our country back to where it needs to be again. Yeah, and that's true because you never know who could be running as a third party or independent. However, talking to this many people as I have who are independent third parties, we're really lucky if people do want to just ride the wave per se and 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 just vote for someone, you know, who is an independent or third party. I would have to say most of the people who are running as a third party or independent are very honest people, people like yourself who have been in the real world and have good experience. And, and most of all, they're doing it because they passionately care about the direction of the country. So we're real lucky as Americans to, to have people. They're putting themselves in position for us um, in case we want to choose that option, in case we want to pull the emergency brake that the Constitution gives us every two years to elect a new Congress before it's too late. So, uh, Jeff, thank you for your time. It's uh, been a pleasure, and good luck in your campaign, sir, and uh, best wishes. Thank you for taking thank the time you. today thank to talk to us. Thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Very welcome.